uh, good evening. Uh, welcome once more to Edinburgh and our room filled with fascinating people and uh, enough table lamps to make it look like Michael Barrymore's living room, i.e. horrible. <laughs> Holy joking, Michael. It's probably the height of good taste, his living room, and a glip to beanbags the lot. Doesn't seem terribly likely, though, does it? Um, tonight we bring you our old pal John Hegley, top comedian and 1FM's very own Richard Herring, and, uh, you know, he must be good if he's got his own Radio 1 show, because if that's not a hallmark of quality, uh, then I don't know what is. Plus, uh, live music from 18 Wheeler, reading by Ian Banks, and uh, a do for about Elvis. It's been pouring down in uh, Edinburgh today, which is a bit of a mixed blessing, because on the downside, and they don't even notice this, you get wet. But uh, on the other hand, it keeps the blinking Pyro clowns off the street. Well, they're not blinking, actually, because that would spoil the mime. But uh, they don't come out in the rain, because it washes the makeup off, and a Pyro without makeup is just a bloke in baggy clothes doing funny hand movements. Like Bez. The other thing, of course, is that uh, while I'm up here, I'm staying in a hotel, which is always a bit weird at first. Uh, thankfully, uh, my room is full of lots of useful information printed on pamphlets. For example, by the phone, it says, Whenever possible, when using the service, could you please inform the service that you are doing so? And uh, obviously, little tips like that make it much easier to acclimatise. But the strange thing about living in a hotel for a week is it's just nothing like home. You know, you spend your, all your time in a cold, dingy room on your own, having to take your meals at certain times, passing shifty-looking characters on the landing. Strange thing about living in a hotel for a week is it's just like being at home, isn't it? Live from uh, Edinburgh and uh, having hot footed it from his Well, you haven't really you finished ages ago, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. No, day off today, actually, Mark. Oh, right. So, <laughs> I've been in bed. <laughs> All right. Is <laughs> uh, Richard Erring, who's uh, doing two shows today. And you were doing your uh, Radio 1 show. I was doing my Radio 1 show last, last night, so I did about five, six shows or something. <laughs> I can't remember. All right. I, yeah. It started at six o'clock in the morning and I. Got to bed about one. Right. And I didn't stop. Between. Okay. So, so. Uh, yeah, Lee and Herring, of course. There's one of, uh, of Lee and Herring. So, why are you doing two shows a day? I mean, you're, most days you are doing two shows. Yeah. Because I, I was talking about one I went to see last night, for which there are posters all around town which say, um, Richard Herring is fat. Yeah. I don't know who's been putting those up. <laughs> and um, there's a big it's picture. very annoying. It's a good poster, and it's a picture of you in that uh, famous Demi Moore pregnant shot. Yeah, it's all real as well. <laughs> People think it's been computer generated. <laughs> <laughs> and that was about uh, two months ago when I was really live then as well, oh, compared to, I mean, after a few pizzas and chips and salt and sauce on them. <laughs> but, oh, I, mean, I mean, that is the, that is the basis of one of those shows, is how much weight you've put on since you became this kind of uh, ubiquitous show business personality. That's it, yeah, it's, yeah. it's the... <laughs> it's just the chocolate and the, I, all my, uh, people often ask me what kind of drugs I have to be on to come up with my crazy ideas. <laughs> and, uh, it's just a half pound of dairy milk does the trick. Uh, often a dangerous cocktail of dairy milk and one and a half litres of Diet Coke. Right. But don't try that if you're not an experienced user. Listeners at home, and <laughs> don't share your bottles. You might catch germs. Right. So watch out for that. <laughs> no, I mean, that's, uh, it, have you put on a lot of weight? I mean, I, I mean, I've only, uh, well, I met you for the first time yesterday. Yeah. Um, although I've been, of course, a huge fan of your work. <laughs> for on many years, <laughs> Richard. Thank uh, you. But I mean, uh, have you have you put on all this weight recently? I have. I put it. I put about two stone on since last year. I like to tell people, especially for the show, sort of Robert De Niro. Raging Bull kind of thing. It's method comedy. It's method comedy, but unfortunately it isn't anything to do with that. I don't know why. Right. Well, I do know why. It's obvious, isn't it? Let's face it. It's, it's your glands, just, isn't it? It's just stuffing my face <laughs> with cakes has done it. Well, I, th I think that's, it's very honest because most people, uh, a lot of people say it's, it's the glands. Yeah. But it's the glands. I thought well, like the glands, when they've gone to bed, the glands <laughs> get up and go out for a curry and ten packs of lager and come back loads fatty. Well, see? my problem is I'm big boned um, <laughs> and my biggest bone is that unusual, incredibly huge curved bone in my stomach there. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, that's my that's my main problem. <laughs> we'll talk about, we'll talk more about that show okay. later on because it's, it's a great show, I think. And uh, but you're doing another show I'm, in the morning, I'm doing a completely a, different show. A completely different show. It's a sort of spontaneous chat show, um, and it's sort of parodying the fiscal system of Edinburgh because people come up assuming you're going to make lots of money, whereas in fact, even if you sell out, you sort of lose lots of money. <laughs> but why is that then? Because. Just other people take it all off you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you come in, you get all this money, and think great, and then then the 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 uh, theatre takes half of it, and then your agent takes half of it, and all the publicity and stuff. So with this morning show, I'm um, instead of having publicity, I'm just sort of giving things away. And mm. sort of in, well, next year, what we're going to do is um, Stuart Lee, I work with, and I, we, we're not going to come to Edinburgh. We're just going to sit home in our houses and get sort of two thousand pounds, just burn it. <laughs> in our, so it saves a lot of trouble. And then we'll throw it out of the window. We'll probably get better reviews for that than uh, from what we're doing. <laughs> so if you sell out your whole room for like four weeks, yeah. you still can't break even. Well, if you if you it depends on the size of your room. In one of the rooms you can't. Stuart's room he can't can't make money. Right. And uh, you know, which is what some people would say was stupid. I'd be one of them. <laughs> um, if I sell out completely in the room I'm in, I'll make about two hundred quid. Jesus Christ! So that's completely. And that's also like the 
that's also like the last week when everyone goes home. Right. Or, you know, well, not everyone, because people, some people live in Edinburgh. <laughs> Rumour has remember. it. Rumour. They've all left <laughs> at the moment, haven't they? And rented their flats out <laughs> yeah, to comedians right, for a thousand so pounds a day. And that's the other. That's, and they're probably the only winners, Mark. <laughs> right, well, as long as somebody wins. As long as somebody wins. <laughs> so why do it, then? I mean, is, it, is that important? Is it to be um, seen here? Well, money isn't all that important, is it? That's what I think. And it's a good laugh, and it's a nice way to meet your public. <laughs> the, all three of them who are sort of mad blokes with... Uh, little camouflage jackets on and they they are my public all those three blokes and it's nice to come up to meet them right so yeah could you not do that the first day and then save yourself a few quid you well know? yeah but you know i might get another one to add to my collection if i hang around <laughs> uh, this is one of them live from edinburgh uh, where uh, richard herring is still with us and we've been joined by uh, john hegley right mark now i said i was going to ask you questions tonight <laughs> didn't i now i don't remember that did yeah, i was gonna now listen i was gonna ask you something first yeah you know, when we're in Manchester and you turn up for the programme, mm. you're such a demure presence, aren't you? And we all feel like that uh, somehow our lives have gone astray because we haven't followed your shining example. Since I've arrived in Edinburgh, and uh, on the brief occasion I've gone through the bar, I'm greeted by this other persona that you've perfected. Stubble, beer, <laughs> cigarettes, Axel Hegley <laughs> is... Abroad in Edinburgh. So what's going on? You can ask me as many things as you like after you've told me this. Okay. Well, it's just it's the, this is the spirit of the festival, <laughs> it is, isn't it? It is. Lay off it. him. But you know that. Well, it's the spirit. Like... What do you mean, it's the spirit? It's the spirit of being at home as well. Well, you can't drink and smoke. <laughs> no, no. And not shave. Not very often. No, no. It's <laughs> to be saved. It's to be saved and to be saved and to be done once a year for right. three weeks. <laughs> and he is still wearing a tie. So yeah. Yeah. Look, come Mark. On. Come on. Very Give credit. smartly. Yeah. I used to come in with a shirt that you could describe disgracefully and make my sister depressed. What's that? Mini Minikin. Mm. I like that one. Got <laughs> your Mini Minikin shirt. And I like your heraldic shirt yeah. as well, you know. Yeah, well, anyway, thank you. Anyway, how's your show going this year? Because it's, 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 it's all your love stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, stuff about love, stuff about uh, relationships that fail and how, how to make them fail. And um, <laughs> now what I was going to ask you was, because I didn't, you know, I, I said I was going to ask you questions, well, you didn't can. I? Last night. You've just See, negotiated yourself extra bits. So normally I just see you <laughs> once a fortnight. Yeah. And when I saw you twice in two days this time. Yeah. And a remarkable. And I said I was going to ask you, anyway, how did you get home after I left you in the bar? Fine, thanks, John. <laughs> right, see, it works then. much better the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> it works much better the other way around, you would have to say. <laughs> um, oh, was that it? Was that the end of that particularly uh, progressive Grilled. line of questions? Yeah, that was a grilling. I was you on grilled the, him. I was on the <laughs> rack there. You weren't a policeman in a previous existence, were you, John? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, wasn't it? I enjoyed that. Anyway, anyway right. Good joke, that. Everybody's enjoying that one, Matt. Very good. Right, okay then. So, uh, what have you been doing then, John, apart from your show and uh, drinking heavily? Oh, 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 oh. Um, I bought this hat today. Look, I'll put it on because we have this little <laughs> fashion spot. And I thought I'd show you it. What do you think? Crap. Right. <laughs> okay, what time are we? Okay. We're How many bits did you want? Right. No. Um, so, how's your, how's your show going in? Because I came to see it and it's yeah. quite a dark piece in, yeah. in many ways, I thought. And I yeah, thought. I know. We've got to sort the lighting out. <laughs> <laughs> Good joke, John. Everyone's enjoying that one. <laughs> Superb. That's yes, excellent. We could have written a show with all the fabulous gags. <laughs> so, but your show's going all right, is it? Yep. Uh, good. All right. Yeah, so, not, 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 well, not too many people. You don't want too many, do you? When right. it's that dark. <laughs> it's a bit of a dark piece, I thought. I think that's the uh, technical experience. That's what the Guardian would say, isn't it, Rich? Yeah, well, they're a great pay for the Guardian. We love them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. So, how many bits are you doing again? Three. Right, one down. Hello. Uh, all right, and uh, we were discussing your show, Richard Herring is Fat. Yes. Which, uh, I think, th I think that is the uh, best poster. In town, what do you reckon, John? I mean, yeah, apart from it's a very know. nice picture. I like, the, I like the lipstick. The lipstick, it's pretty, isn't it? This is Demi Moore, which is, shows uh, Richard in uh, all his glory. There, with that. <laughs> no, it's not computer graphics. Not computer it's graphics. Not... It's real flesh. So I mean, like obviously, it's the, you know, uh, you're doing this show based around the weight you've put on. Yeah. Think, unashamedly being. I mean, like, how much is it like a comic tour? And how much are you kind of? Would you like to shed it, or are you used to it now? No, I it? would like. I, it's got worse as well. It's just started to get to the point where it's just so horribly annoying and when it gets hot it's oh <laughs> i'm just like you're starting to sort of get heat rush and you're sort of walking along and sweat dribbling down your thighs i'm not that fat but i'm um, oh, no. you know i'm <laughs> it's getting it's getting to the stage where you think if i don't do something about this it will get it you're will get fat, out you're chubby i'm chubby i'm big bones as i was saying earlier but uh yes uh 
I mean, for people that we've talked about, obviously, I've always talked about you being fat. <laughs> I'm I mean, not that. I'm good looking you know, as well. You are. Oh, yes. Uh, and, uh, uh, carry it well. To, yeah. But, um, so, I mean, for people who haven't seen it, uh, should there be a few? You haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is the show about? I mean, it's basically a kind of pilgrim's progress, isn't it? It is. It's like, uh, well, it's a mixture. What I've done is uh, I've, I've looked at stories that have good plots and then <laughs> copied them. Nicked them. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> turned it back. So it's a mixture of... It's a mixture of Oliver by Oliver the Musical, yeah. not not Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens, Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, Robocop, uh, Misery. Yeah. There's all sorts of things in there and a bit of Wizard of Oz and stuff in there. But it's sort of, it is, it's sort of like an epic voyage to yeah. discover how uh, fat affects life and how life affects fat and hopefully arrive, I can't tell you what happens at the end because it's very exciting, but hopefully arrive <laughs> at some sort of conclusion as to how I... I could be able to lose weight right. um and then if if we all take that on at the end all the fat people and me in the audience <laughs> so it's a journey. next year it's a journey it's a journey through my life and and through my hopes and dreams there's happy bits and sad bits not many sad bits <laughs> admittedly i think it run, run the full gamut of emotions it is it's everything uh, from, from, from happiness right back to sort of happiness again <laughs> <laughs> passing through some of the other ones. I mean, obviously, you, you were saying, like, you know, you eat a lot of chocolate and things. I mean, is that is that genuinely your problem, that you do you do binge on all these things? It, it, it's a bit of a binging problem, and I think beer mm. might might be the problem. I'm not sure. Right, right, right. I think beer might be something to do with it. But uh, I do... Well, I, I, the, the other thing, I don't really go on too much about the show, but uh, is the fact I can lose weight quite easily, but then it's just keeping... The, the problem is keeping it off. I think everyone has that. And you go on a diet and you lose weight, mm. and then you sort of you put on more and then you realise you're much heavier than you were before you went on the diet. Well, did you see this diet? There's a new diet in The Independent today. <laughs> I did see which it. is the Carbohydrate Addicts Diet. Yeah. I don't know whether this was, this was, but apparently um, it, it seems to be that you can eat three, you eat three meals a day, two of which should contain no carbohydrates, mm. and, um, and then the other one you can eat what the hell you like. It sounds like it? a good diet, but I, it's, you're only allowed to eat what you like for an hour. I'd prefer, if, if it was like you're allowed to eat one for 23 hours and then one hour you're not allowed to, you can eat other stuff they don't like yeah. then that diet would be for me right. i would go i don't know if it would work but i'm prepared to give it a go i mean are you does it ever cross your mind that like you know if you if you lost weight you would like there'd be a kind of a, a sort of samson thing that you like you wouldn't be funny anymore <laughs> um well i was i was two stone lighter last year and i was still quite i am funnier <laughs> than i was last year so maybe it is maybe the fatter i get the funnier i'll get but the what the danger is that people start laughing at you Rather than with you. Yeah. That's the danger. Yeah, but that happens whether you're fat or it's, not for, for yeah, many of us. It <laughs> it, does it? I mean, John, obviously, I mean, this is a, pro uh, a problem, presumably, you know. I mean, you're a very thin man, aren't you? Pretty skinny. Yeah, I know. That's all right, though, isn't it? You're fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. No, no, but, I mean, is it, are, you, are you sort of aware of all these diets and the problems that people have? Is it nice to, you know, not have to think about that yeah, ever? Yeah, um, but I don't think about it. Um, it's your metabolism, isn't it? <laughs> it's your metabolism. Like, yes, it is. You can eat. I can see. I just have to have one little tiny piece of chocolate and uh, pizza and chips, six pints of lager and a curry on the way home, and the weight just piles on. Understand? I, I, <laughs> I understand that. I can't see. It's Definitely not so not. And that's the diet. So, I mean, obviously, <laughs> like uh, Lee and Herring is like people know the name Lee and Herring from the Radio One shows and Lionel Nimrod and Explicable yeah, and that. So, so I mean. How much of the time do you spend as a double act? I mean, at this, oh. uh, this time, you, the, at the festival this time, you're doing separate shows. We are. Stuart's um, appearing quite often in my morning show. But, yeah. um, yes, we are doing separate shows because we spend all our lives together. <laughs> Let me away from him. Um, He's on here tomorrow now. I know. <laughs> but we, we didn't come on together, you know. <laughs> and, uh, no, no, we get on very well. But we do spend an awful lot of time together. Uh, and we're very different. If you come and see both our shows... I have done. And then, which you have done, you'll notice, although there are, like, points of similarity, and if you're very... If you're look very deeply into it you can see why we're together but uh it, it's it's odd how different we are so uh yeah. i don't know that's the success of the double act i think it's the sort of serious brooding bloke taking himself too seriously which is me obviously and then the uh <laughs> the stupid uh sort of optimist it's pessimism versus optimism and uh, how they react against one another right that's uh, the Guardian critique of it. Right, that's the Guardian critique. <laughs> well, I mean, we return. We mentioned the Guardian. I mean, you got a review of your show. Uh, yeah. said is fat. We said it was basically we were kind of discussing this early thought. Perhaps they, they liked it, but it was in a very sort of grudging and snotty way because it wasn't kind of intellectual enough. Yeah, well, I'm sure you did. Like, if you read it, if you read it in a sort of happy voice, it's good. <laughs> but if you, if you read it in a sad voice, it looks like you think I'm a sort of a twat. If I can right. say that. Yeah, that's but, fine. Um, yeah. I said I it on my show way. yesterday at nine, so <laughs> right, no, I'm going to say it now, twat. Right. There you go. But no, I think he does like it. But he, you know, he's, he's looking to, in, into it a bit too seriously. There are some deeper levels to it, but basically, what I want to do in my Edinburgh shows is sort of have a laugh and and 
all the people who come have a laugh and go and tell their friends and it doesn't really matter if I get good or bad reviews because the word of the, the people, you know, last year this happened last year with Rasputin when I, and uh, we sold out, you know, from the, from the, from that about the first week onwards because yeah. people were going and telling their friends how good it was but the, the reviewers going, mm, this is a man dressed in a false beard dancing around singing Boney M songs. <laughs> um, mm. And it's very hard in the garden to go, that was a good crack. <laughs> yeah, right, absolutely. <laughs> and also a slightly clever underneath it all. But um, So it just sells through word of mouth. It yeah. sells out for the whole season and then you only lose, what, 1,500? Only, only about 1,500, right, so, so, you know, I'm so, laughing. So it's a result, isn't it? <laughs> you said you had uh, another little poem for us, which you're going to do in a bit. But, I mean, you're a festival veteran of all of us. You're, I mean, how long have you been coming? 12 years. Thing? 12 years. 12 as, consecutive years. As performer. Yeah. So did he used to come before you? Or no. At, uh, no, my brother came once, uh, many years ago, and he, he brought me home uh, a knife. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of those you put down your sock. A sock knife, I think, is the technical expression. No, it's a stabbing knife. A stabbing knife. <laughs> well, right. Why did he bring you that? So I could stab him. Right, okay. That's one of the themes of your show, isn't it, really? This sort of family harmony. That no, he brought me a knife, and he brought my sister um, a man in a kilt. <laughs> yeah, no, small. Uh, he did, he right, did, yeah. and it, it was it was lovely actually to think that he came up to this festival all those years ago before I did. It, right. I, I find that a, t a moving thing. Yeah, I mean, has it changed? I mean, it's, like, it's got bigger and bigger, obviously. But I mean, um, well, I mean, there's a lot more com com comic uh, things coming up here. Yeah. Different shows every year as well, isn't it? It changes every year. It's not just the same thing every year. Right. I don't know if you've understood the principle. <laughs> yeah. Of course it's bloody changed. <laughs> OK, well, hey, just, man, don't get heavy. Right. Don't get heavy. Right. Come on, it's a lovely beer scene in here. Lap. Easy. Don't take the... <laughs> he's had an extra beer. We all had one can. He's gone on to another. It's all gone horribly wrong. <laughs> right, well, uh, OK. Well, we'll Can I do my poem, Mark? Mark? Do your poem, yes, yes. This is a love plan that was written by my dog. All right. <laughs> I saw you in the park. I wanted to be your friend. I tunnelled my snout up your non-barking end. Very nice. I think that's very, uh, very touching. And it's like, but don't you find that humans and dogs are very same in the way they relate to each other? I certainly do. That relates to the way I go about things. And yourself. Do you sniff people's backsides and oh, right up, up trees? Yeah, get their nostrils right in. Okay, oh, sorry. No, I don't know. I mean, I, you're, you're a much keener oh, observer dear. of dogs than I am, so uh, I don't know. All right, lad, anyway. Hiya, Mark. How are you doing? All right? Yeah, all right, Tal, are you? Not bad. So we've got, well, you, you're supposed to bring us your choice now, aren't you, of the uh, pick of the fringe? Yeah, lads, look at the fringe. Right, yes. Yeah. And has it changed at all? Of course it's changed, idiot. It's not the same. Every oh, sorry, you've just done that, haven't you? <laughs> uh, oh, no, it's not changed. No, not at all. No. But it's great. I mean, I've had a thoroughly great time and I've been out and I only sort of take in one show a day because that's all I can sort of fit in and you won't give me any more money to get into the other stuff. Right. But um, I'm really enjoying it and I think you picked the right person to go around and pick out the highlights of the Edinburgh Festival. Great. So what have you picked for us today? Well, uh, let's start with a clip, I think. Yeah. Please come sit together. Ready? Hang on, hang on a minute. That what? sounds like the Tokyo Shock Boys that we had on yesterday. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. They are. I mean, I've been again this afternoon, and what a well, whopping I know, show. Yeah, I know, but we what? know that's a whopping show. You said that was a whopping show yesterday. It You're was. supposed to pick something different each day as your pick of the fringe. Nah, no, not having any of that. I mean, why bother? I mean, you know, I only had about eight quid, and I liked them so much yesterday. Did it all again, you know, the string round the... Yeah, oh, yeah, that yeah. kind of gubby. You're brilliant. I'm going again tomorrow, actually. <laughs> do you mind if I do it again tomorrow night? Oh, Jesus. Well, what's I mean, your you missed the point, really, haven't Why? you? Why? Go on, tell me that. Why? Well, you're supposed to cover something different every day and then. Well, you didn't tell me that, did you? Well, I thought it was obvious. <laughs> I thought it was obvious. It no, was I mean, I. Well, have I, you not done it? That's no good. I mean, what have you done? Anything else you've done interesting today? Um. Oh, well, I've not had any money. I mean, I did sneak into one exhibition that was a killer. It was a bit frightening, actually. I mean, I know it's sort of quarter past eleven at night, but I don't know if I should talk about it because it's going to give people nightmares. Right. It really is. I mean, honestly. What was it? Well, it was called The Horrors of Scotland Past, and it really was grim. It's, it's on Princess Street there. Oh, and it, is it? I don't know how much it was to get in, but it was... F I, I, I'm going to have nightmares tonight. So what's that? All sort of uh, battles and beheadings and uh, blood and all that? No, no, you had like you had uh, a, sh a case with the first Shoe and Cry album in, <laughs> which was really frightening. And then a bit further, it got worse <laughs> as you went along, and then it had the complete run rig back catalogue. Right. And I'll tell you what, there was just the, the actual centrepiece of the whole thing. It was signed photograph of Big Country. <laughs> 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 Terrible. You sure, that, you sure that wasn't HMV? Could have been our kid. Mark Radcliffe, missing you already.